Over the past year, I've had the opportunity to travel to hundreds of high schools across the country. I've stood in front of tens of thousands of young people and I've asked them a question, one simple question. And that question is, what do you want to be remembered for? What do you want your legacy to be? When your time is done walking up and down the halls of your high school, what's that thing that you wanted to leave behind? What is it that you want them to say about you? I've asked tens of thousands of young people that question. And what's, what's crazy to me is that I ask that question and I begin, begin to get responses back, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or emails or handwritten letters. There's always a common thread throughout all the responses. You know, it has nothing to do with they want to be remembered for their job. They want to be remembered for the money that they make. And what's far different than that Young people all across the country, they all write in and tell me they want to be remembered for one thing. And that's change. They all want to be a part of something incredible. They all want to be a part of, of bringing change to their communities, to their schools, to the world. And it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter if it's New York or L.A. It doesn't matter if it's Washington or Florida or Nashville or small rural communities in Nebraska. Young people all across the United States, they all, they all want to be a part of something incredible. You know, I call that the tiny whisper. And I think that this tiny whisper, I think it lives inside each and every one of us. I think there's this, this thing inside all of us telling us that we can be about something incredible. We can be about something big. Have you ever asked a five or six year old what they want to be when they grow up? Their eyes light up, they look at you, and they give you a response filled with, with nothing but hope and excitement for the future. The sky's the limit at that point. Mom, I want to be an astronaut. Dad, I'm going to be a firefighter. I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be a musician. When I was a young person, I just wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> but as we grow up, that tiny whisper, it starts to change. As we, as we come from five to six to seven, as we begin to hit middle school, which is the most awkward years for most of us, if we survive that time in our life, we head on into high school, and all of a sudden, it's like that tiny whisper starts to get beat down by the outside world. Young people start to hear for the first time, you can't do that. You'll never make money doing this. There's no college degree for that. That's not a career. And all of a sudden, that tiny little whisper that, that lives inside each and every one of us, telling us that we can be a part of something incredible, that we can create something for ourselves, well, it starts to get drowned out by this, this outside noise and this, this pressure and all of these abilities and desires and things that we have to do to perform and to make it, to get a better test grade, to get a better test score, to, to make it to college, because if you don't go to college, you can't have a career, and if you don't have a career, you're not gonna amount to anything. All of a sudden, that tiny little whisper that lives inside of us, it, it begins to just kind of get drowned out. And then those people go from adolescence to adulthood, and then when we become adults, we've, we've kind of lost this idea that, that we had this thing we wanted to be about, this thing that we were so passionate for, and we've almost cashed in this concept. You know, one good, good test that I give for a lot of people is I say, have you ever seen someone do something incredible? Have you ever seen someone do something so inspiring? And you watch that and you see it, and you're forced to respond one of two ways. You see someone do something incredible and inspiring, and it tells you, man, I, that's amazing. I gotta get off the couch, I gotta go do something, I gotta go fulfill what I was created to do because that's incredible. Or we see someone do something inspiring and we instantly become jealous or angry or bitter. And it's almost like the, that person did what we couldn't do, that person fulfilled that thing in them that we could never fulfill in ourselves, they took that chance that we weren't willing to take. And us young people, we look at adults and we feel like that's what we see in society, we see adults who, who maybe forgot what that tiny little whisper was telling them inside of them when they were just a young kid. You see, I have this thought. It's this thought that every young person wants to be remembered for something. They do. It's that driving force behind them. They all want to do something incredible. They all want to be about something bigger. And as we grow older, we're forced to make these decisions. We're forced to decide. We're forced to, to do things that, that, that tell us whether we can or we can't make it. You know, when I was young, I thought education meant high school, college, degree. And I believe that young people define education differently today. I believe that young people, they define success very differently today. When I talk to young people, success isn't how much money you make, it's what kind of a difference you can make. When I talk to young people, education isn't always about the degree, it's about fulfilling that thing that you think you were created to do. You know, I walk in and out of high schools and I, I speak to young people and I look at this raw emotion and passion in their eyes and I see that they so desperately want to be brilliant. They so desperately want to fulfill this thing. I think that being a part of something incredible, I think it's written in the DNA of young people today. I think it's written, it's like it's been uploaded into the DNA and the strands of who they are and who they think that they can become. You know, my education, I, I graduated high school with a 2.4 GPA. I got a 19 on my ACT. I limped into college. I'll never forget staying up late, studying for tests, memorizing dates, only to forget them as soon as I handed it in. 
That wasn't my education. My education came when I started to listen to that tiny whisper inside of me, that thing that told me I could be about something incredible. It came far after college. It, it told me that, Mike, you can take this, this piece of plywood that's attached to some metal with some wheels on it, that skateboard, that thing that your mom and dad and your friends think you're too old to ride around on, <laughs> you can take that thing and you can use it to cause change. You can take that thing and you can use it to give back. You can take that skateboard and use it to make a difference. I began to listen to that tiny whisper saying, yeah, I, th I think I can. So I grabbed that skateboard in my backpack. In my backpack, I put socks, food, water, hygiene kits, and bus passes. I grabbed a couple young kids who still believed like I did that that tiny whisper was what we were supposed to do, and we began skating around the streets of Lincoln just feeding homeless people, giving out socks, giving out food, giving out water. See, that was when my education started. I found myself underneath a bridge talking to people who had lived outside for 20 or 30 years. Those people became my professors. Those people taught me what it means to dream. They taught me what it means to succeed. They taught me what it means to fail. Those people taught me what it means to believe in yourself, and they showed me what it looks like when you forget about that tiny little whisper and you start to buy into different things. You see, I stand before you today excited because I have this idea that social change is written in the DNA of the young people who walk up and down the halls of the high schools that we see all across the United States of America. I believe that young people, it's written in who they are that they want to give back and they want to make a difference. When I ask kids what they want to stand for, what they want to do, it's always these big concepts and big ideas that they're going to have the ability, the opportunity. Life has created them a way to make change. Life has given them a chance to be a part of something incredible. You see, I believe that the society that we live in today, there's this gap. There's this gap between adults and there's this gap between kids and I think the technology has a lot to do with that. I think that, that the way that social media has a lot to do with that. I mean, how many of you adults have had to have your kid ask you how to use the iPhone? They've shown you what it means. They've become your teacher. So with this idea and this thought that change is written in the DNA and the hearts and the minds and the souls of young people, I have a question for the adults today. And my question is this. Are you ready for us? Because I believe that there's a tidal wave of young people coming. A tidal wave of young people who believe just like I do. They believe that making a difference matters more than making money. There's a tidal wave of young people coming with 2.4 GPAs. There's a tidal wave of young people coming who have degrees from YouTube University. There's a tidal wave of young people coming who, who follow their dreams and hopes and goals on Twitter and they post the things that they want to be about on Instagram. I believe there's a tidal wave of young people coming who believe just like I believed when I was a little kid and like I believe now. That change is written in our DNA. So my question for the world today is are you ready for us? Because we're coming. Thank you.